There's nothing better than uncovering interesting, lesser known facts about the Disneyland Resort. There's so much trivia to know about all aspects of Disney, but today we zoom in on Pixar Pier over at Disney's California Adventure. Pixar Pier, originally called Paradise Pier, opened with Disney California Adventure Park in 2001. Like most of opening day DCA, Paradise Pier received criticism for its odd design choices. Sun Wheel Ferris Wheel theme, off-the-shelf rides like the Malibuer, and the obvious cost-cutting ads everywhere throughout the park. Since Disneyland was meant to go above and beyond any existing theme parks, it seemed odd to create Paradise Pier a nod to the 1920 and 1940 Coastal California amusement parks. They seem to be the antithesis of what Walt Disney wanted to create with Disneyland. But where did the boardwalk-esque theme of the original Paradise Pier come from? It turns out that, at least in part, it can be attributed to then-CEO Michael Eisner's love of his childhood vacations in the seaside communities of the Northeast, thus the Atlantic City boardwalk-esque theme. Of course, they also pull from the California Coastal Boardwalk amusement parks like Santa Monica and Santa Cruz. But if you look at the Boardwalk Inn, Disney's Yacht Club Resort, the Beach Club Resort, and the Boardwalk itself that Eisner greenlit in Disney World, you'll see how his passion for the Atlantic City Northeast Boardwalk theming penetrated Disney parks during his time as CEO. Paradise Pier was the last project with this theme under Eisner. Most people know Pixar Pier was modeled after California coastal music parks. Interestingly, the Pixar Pal Round, formerly Sun Wheel, and then Mickey's Fun Wheel was modeled after the Wonder Wheel on Coney Island in New York City. This type of Ferris wheel is called a eccentric wheel because of how every other passenger's car can move independently. The Wonder Wheel on Coney Island and Pixar Pal Round are two of the most famous eccentric wheels in the world, with Pixar Pal Round being the tallest at 160 feet. We love to talk about music at Main Street USA Studios, and you can't talk about Pixar Pier without mentioning Michael Giacchino. Michael composed music for The Incredibles, Ratatouille, Zootopia, Coco, Inside Out, and so many more Disney movies. But did you also know he composed the music you hear inside the ride queue for the Incredicoaster and the music on the ride. And you may not know that on the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind ride, there are five different music tracks to correspond with the five emotions. Joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. So each ride experience is different. Michael also composed these five whimsical tracks. He definitely has a footprint in Pixar Pier. Speaking of emotional whirlwind, did you know that the ride is a reuse of Flix Flyers from Bugs Land? Originally built by Zamperla, Flix Flyers was masterfully reimagined into a beautiful new ride. Zamperla is an Italian ride manufacturer founded in 1966 by Antonio Zamperla. In 2005, Mr. Antonio Zamperla became the first Italian to be inducted into the IAAPA Hall of Fame because of his significant contribution to the entire theme park industry. Join other theme park magnates such as Walt Disney, George Ferris, and Walter Knott. Zamperla manufactured Dumbo the Flying Elephant Ride, Triceratops Spin in Animal Kingdom, Magic Carpets of Aladdin and Magic Kingdom, and many more. Zamperla specialized in smaller, family-friendly rides versus large-scale coasters. In another interesting connection to Coney Island, like Pixar Pal Round previously, Sam Perla was selected to restore and renovate Luna Park at Coney Island, New York City, where they only installed Sam Perla rides throughout. Over at Toy Story Midway Mania, you'll find a giant animatronic Mr. Potato Head voiced by Don Rickles. Don actually recorded 750 words in four songs, making it the most audio recorded for an animatronic at a Disney park. What you might not know is that there is a ride operator using lots of computers and cameras to scan the audience and choose Mr. Potato's phrases based on the audience member's appearance and actions. 
With a $1 million budget, Mr. Potato Head required more programming hours than any other Disney animatronic. With specialty features like his mouth being able to form actual vowel sounds, and then he can look directly at individual audience members. If you watch the show, it's easy to see how amazing this animatronic is. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.